Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So we are on Windows today and I'm going to show you how you can make your fonts look beautiful with glyphs. So a lot of fonts that you get from third party sites that you're going to download onto your device so that Design Space can then use them in your system fonts a lot of them you'll see come with beautiful swirls, they come with added pictures, hearts, like some of them look amazing. But you can't actually access those glyphs in Design Space. So in Design Space itself, when you select a font, it will only give you the font basics. So I'm going to show you on Windows today how you can get all those extra pieces to make your fonts look beautiful. So I'm going to open up a text box and I'm going to go to my font box and I'm going to search for Samantha. We're going to choose Samantha Upright today, which is a paid for font. So you download it onto your device. And I'm just going to type Samantha. And you can see that it's quite what I would call, it's a beautiful font, but you know, it's very simplistic. There's not a lot going on with this, but we can really, really change it. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the font size and it's really important that when you're working with glyphs that they all, each of your letters are within the same font size. So I'm going to make these just so we can see what's going on, 200. I'm then going to go to my Windows menu and I'm going to search for character map. And character map is where we're going to find all of those beautifully hidden swirls and glyphs and all those extra add-ons. So I'm going to open up my character map. And I want to make sure that I'm working with the same font that I'm working with in Design Space. So I'm going to open up the drop down menu. And I'm just going to find Samantha Upright so that we are working with the exact same font. Now you can see here, if we look here, we've got lots and lots of characters, but we want to find all the hidden characters. So we want to find all those beautiful swirls and glyphs. Now sometimes you will find them here. So you can have a look and you'll see that straight away they're there, but sometimes they're hidden. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to character set. We're going to make sure it's set to Unicode. We're going to come down to group by and we're going to go down to Unicode sub range. We then get an extra pop up box. And we're going to go all the way down to private use characters. So that's Unicode, Unicode sub range, and then private use characters. And this is then going to open up a whole new world for us. So you can see here straight away that we add so many different characters into this now. So I want a nice S, so I'm going to go for this one here and I'm going to select and let's bring this one in as well, so select. I then want a lowercase a for the end, so I want something that's quite sort of swirly, so let's select that one and that one. And you can see here we've got all sorts of different characters and we've got some little extras as well. So I'm going to add a heart into here, select and let's just add something else like that little flower and select. Once I've selected all of the ones I want to use, I can select copy. So I've now copied those characters. 
if I open up another text box and I need to make sure that again I've got the same font selected so in this case it's Samantha Upright I can delete my text I can then right click on my mouse and select paste Now I need these to be the same font size as this so the font size on this is 200 so I need to make the font size on these 200 and I'm then going to ungroup these ones so that I can select the individual pieces that I may want to use. So I'm going to use these ones here, so I'm going to get rid of these. I then need to change out some of these for these. So the first thing I'm going to do is ungroup this text here so that they become individual letters. I'm going to bring my S over and I actually don't want it that big, so I am going to reduce it down in size. I'm going to get rid of that one just by deleting it and then bring this one in and then the A again that's going to go there so I'm going to get rid of that one and bring this one over. I can then add in extra glyphs if I wanted to. So for example, if I wanted to add this one in, I can reduce that down. And I could have a play and work out kind of where I want it to go. And I think we, we don't need the heart, so we'll get rid of that. Now once I've made my changes, I then need to be able to, for example, cut this. However, this is where things kind of change a little bit. Because we've ungrouped everything into individual letters, we now need to put this back together. And because we've got what we would call a script font where our letters and our elements are overlapping, it's really important that we weld these. So if I just change these to a draw, you can see that these are all overlapping. If I attach them, they're still going to be overlapping. So my machine will cut out all of these extra overlapping bit and we don't want that so any time that letters or elements overlap you need to weld them now here's the thing attaching is like paper clipping welding is like super gluing once you weld something and you save and you then close design space down when you then reopen the project, you cannot unweld. You can unattach, but you cannot unweld once it's saved and closed down. So what I tend to do is I save my project now when everything's attached or ungrouped and then I weld and then I close it down so that if I want to change this at a later date, and just change a single letter or a single element, I don't need to redo the whole thing. So I always save it as it is now, then I weld. And I'm gonna weld so that you can see the difference. So as we can see there, everything's overlapping. Once we weld, everything flows into each other. So that is now one welded piece. So the S will cut out as we see it, but everything else is welded together. I can change that back to a cut. And then I can go cut that out if I want to. So that is how you bring in glyphs to Design Space on Windows. 
I hope this has been helpful. If you've got any comments or questions, please do leave them below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. As always, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.